So why not put all those jigs and fixtures and shop upgrades that you've been making to use and build a wine hutch? This one that I'm gonna be making is gonna have plenty of space for glassware, and it's also gonna have plenty of space for wine bottles underneath. So I hope you'll join me as I build this thing over the next few videos. Eventually in woodworking, you're gonna to need to learn how to make legs. And it doesn't matter if you're making a side table, a dresser, a bookcase, um, you're eventually gonna to need to know how to do this task. And I usually get my legs from a much wider plank of wood and I'll either rip them all out at the bandsaw or I'll use a table saw. And the very first thing I do when getting my legs, roughing my legs out of a wider board is I'll flatten one edge of the joiner and then I'll take it over either to the table saw or the band saw and I'll use that nice flat edge as a reference. I should point out that at this stage with the joiner, after edge joining this edge, I'm really not concerned with getting this edge perfectly square to one of the faces. I really just want this edge to be nice and flat so that I have a nice reference to use on the table saw rip fence. Now we need to rip these legs to rough width, and I'm gonna do that at the table saw. But you could do this at the bandsaw if you were really concerned about the amount of material you have. Because remember at the table saw, we're gonna lose about an eighth of an inch at a full curved blade but uh, I should be okay for the amount of stock that I have. And I set the width of the leg to be the thickness of the board because there's really no need to go any wider when I rip these to rough width because these legs are gonna be square. So let's go. Until I start ripping off some of these legs, this blank is gonna be pretty heavy. And to help me support some of the weight at the front of the table saw, I'm gonna use a roller stand. The next step in my process for getting legs ready for a project is to, after ripping, flatten one face and then square one adjoining face at the joiner. Now I can reference this freshly flattened face up against the fence of the joiner and I can flatten and square one adjoining face. Now that I have two flat faces and they are square to each other from the joiner, I can plane the opposite faces to their final thickness. And I'm gonna do that by placing the face jointed sides down on the bed of the planer. I like to make an arrow that's pointing towards the face that was jointed at the joiner. That way I don't accidentally plane the wrong face at the planer. So you always want to plane the opposite face that was jointed at the joiner.
Now that I have all the rail stock to mention the thickness, I'm gonna square and flatten one edge and then rip everything to its final width. Before I go any further, I'm gonna make the loose tenant stock and I'm gonna get those from some scrap resaw and cherry. I need to next make the grooves in the posts to receive the panels, and I'm gonna do that using my plunge router and a quarter inch spiral bit. In order to make the grooves and the rails to receive the panels, I'm going to use my stack dado set at the table saw. At the bandsaw, I resawed a bunch of five quarter maple for the panels for the wine hutch. And the next thing I'm going to do now is plane all of the pieces to thickness before I glue them together. I decided that after the planer, I'd go ahead and give these panel sections a few passes through the drum sander. Now I need to glue up the panels for the wine hutch. And there are two wide panels in the back and then two skinnier panels on the sides. So I've already glued up the panels for the back, which were a glue up of three boards, but the panels for the sides only need to have one glue up or, or two boards. So that's what I'm gonna do next. I'm gonna get a nice straight edge on both mating surfaces at the joiner and then I'll glue them together. I scraped off most of the glue off of the panels and the next thing I need to do is cut them to their final width. And because this is a glue up of multiple boards, I'm gonna keep it somewhat symmetrical. So I'm gonna take the same amount of material off of both sides when I rip it to its final width.
The panels are a little too thick in order to go into their panel grooves. So in order to get them down to the right thickness, I'm going to use the back cutter of a panel raising bit and go all the way around the perimeter of each panel. I'm going to switch gears for a little bit and move on to making the buttons which are going to hold down the top to the case. I need to make those before I assemble the case because I need to make the mortises that receive the buttons in the front and back rail. I need to square the ends of this mortise and the first thing I like to do is take a chisel and just define where these long edges meet the end of the mortise. And I just take the chisel and I press the back of the chisel up against the wall of the mortise, hold it at an angle and then just tap it into the very corner or the end of the mortise to make a line right there and then I'll do the same thing on the other side and th that corner and that corner as well. Now I can just do the same thing on this side. The top three shelves are going to be supported by shelf pins. The next thing I'm going to do is round over some edges on the rails and all of the edges on the legs using an eighth inch radius roundover bit. And at this point when, I, when I'm starting to do the roundover process, I can kind of take a little bit of a deep breath because I know I'm getting close to the end. This morning I glued up the front frame for the wine hutch and I also took the rear framing panels out of the clamps. So the next thing I need to assemble is the front frame to the rear frame with the two side panels. So last night my wife helped me glue up the front subassembly to the back subassembly because there was just no way I was going to be able to do that glue up on my own. It, this is just too big of a piece. I'm going to kick off part three by working on the top to the wine hutch. And I'm going to get that from a long piece of four quarter cherry. So the first thing I'm going to do is cut off the end of the uh, four quarter board where there's a lot of checking and there's a knot right here. So I'm going to lose this section right here and then I'm going to measure out for the material that I need and cut the other side. So I'm going to get the top from both of these boards, but uh, the width of these boards are close to 12 inches wide. So instead of trying to flatten 12 inches of board, I'm going to rip each of these in half and then glue all four boards back together for the top. And I think it'll look really nice. And because both of these boards or both of these halves were from the same length of board, everything should match really nicely. So the next thing I'm going to do is get a nice flat and straight edge on one side and then I'll rip it in half at the table saw. So before I cut these boards a rough width for the glue up and essentially cut them in half, 
I'm going to cut off one edge of this board because there's some really nasty cracking on this one side. So I'm gonna cut this off and then I'll cut it down the middle. I made the top about an eighth of an inch too wide. So I'm gonna split that difference and I'm gonna rip the same amount of material off of each edge. With the exception of the back edges of the top, I'm gonna to use a 3 16 inch radius roundover bit on the bottom edges. And on the top, I'm gonna to use an eighth inch radius roundover bit. I need to make a frame in the back of the wine hutch and it's gonna serve two purposes. It's going to support the lower shelf in the back of the wine hutch and it's also gonna support the drawer runners all the way in the back. So that's what I'm gonna work on next. I have the frame temporarily clamped in the back of the case. And as I mentioned earlier, this frame is going to support the lower shelf 
and it's also going to support the drawer supports and the center drawer guides. And it's the drawer supports and the drawer guides that I'm going to work on next. In order to get the drawer supports to fit in properly to the rabbits that I just finished chopping out with a chisel, I need to remove some material from each end of each drawer support. And I'm gonna do that using a stacked dado set at the table saw. And in order to control the length of the lip that I'm gonna be creating, I'm gonna use my rip fence to, as a stop as I push the work over top of the dado blade. And now, this is probably one of the very few times where doing a cross cutting action at the table saw with your workpiece pushed up against the fence is okay. Um, when it becomes problematic when you're actually cutting some material off and that material can get jammed in between the blade and the fence and it can cause kickback. So this is a dry assembly of the system that's going to support the lower shelf and it's also going to support both drawers. I'm going to start working on the drawers next for the wine hutch. And for the drawer fronts and the drawer backs, I'm going to use this piece of four quarter maple. And for the drawer fronts, I want the grain to be continuous from one drawer into the next. I use some carpet tape to attach a template to make a recessed drawer pull. I'm gonna hog out this material on the inside using a quarter inch diameter spiral bit. And on the horizontal portion, I'm gonna inlay a piece of cherry that you can grab onto.
I ease the edges of the circle portion of the recess, and the next thing I need to work on is a piece of cherry that's gonna run end to end across the horizontal portion of the recess. And I'm gonna make it so that it's about an eighth of an inch proud of the surface of the maple. In order to get the length for this piece of cherry that's gonna get inserted into this horizontal section of the recess, I took the piece of cherry and I squared one end and I'm just gonna butt it up against the end of the left side of the horizontal recess and then I'm gonna make a mark with my marking knife When I go to bang this piece of cherry into the recess, I want some assurance that this middle section of the pool is gonna be dead flat with the bottom of the recess. So at the table saw, I nibbled away some of the material at the very ends, and now I'm just gonna clean it up with a chisel. And these slots that I'm making with my stack data set will receive the drawer bottoms. These pieces that I'm milling now are gonna get attached underneath the drawer and they'll later receive a groove and that groove will ride on the drawer guides in the case. So when you guys weren't looking, I went ahead and glued up both drawers. So the next thing I'm gonna do with my block plane is level out these tails so that they're nice and flush with the drawer fronts and the drawer backs. I'm going to next mill the runners from a piece of scrap cherry. Now this is the tricky part of setting the drawer guide on top of the drawer support and this is the method that I've used in the past and it seems to work okay. I leave the drawer runner long in the back so that I can, once the drawer is inserted over the runner, I can use a clamp and tighten down the runner to the back on top of the 
drawer support. And I'll just slowly pull the drawer out little by little and I'll fire a nail in as I go. I need the next glue in the kickers, one per drawer. Kickers are what keep the drawer from tipping forward when you go to pull the drawer out. And these corner brackets, one in each corner, will secure the lower shelf. For the shelves for this piece, I'm going to be using three quarter inch thick cherry ply. And I'm going to need to edge band all of the fronts of all the shelves with some solid cherry. So I'm going to cut those strips next that I'm going to be gluing on to the front edge. I need the next glue the edge banding on to each shelf. And to make glue clean up a lot easier from the squeeze out, I applied some paste wax to each face towards the front edge. And I'm going to attach it with glue and I'm gonna apply clamps. And I'm also gonna use blue tape in between the clamps to hold this on while the glue cures. Okay, so I think this is the first time I've tried using blue tape to hold the edge banding on, and it really doesn't do that great of a job. I couldn't get enough pressure applied with the tape in between the clamps, so I just ended up throwing on a bunch more clamps. The edge banding was intentionally left proud of the surface so that I can come back after it's glued up and flush it down to the surface using a trim router. So I'm gonna use a trim router with an edge guide, and I'm also using a DIY faceplate that only covers half or the front section of the trim router. Now that I have the edge banding nice and flush to the surface, I can go ahead and rip all of the shelves to their final width. With the shelves cut to length and width, I need to next do the tricky part of this shelf installation, and that's notching around the corners of the posts. And I also need to notch around the back of this center panel divider. So that's what I'm gonna tackle next, and I'm gonna use my table saw and a crosscut sled. I'm kicking off part five by working on the wine glass holders, and I'm gonna get those from Four Quarter Maple.
With all those boards resawn, I need to flatten one face and then plane these to their final thickness. And I'm gonna place the resawn face down on the bed of the joiner. I need to next make the component that's gonna get attached to the wine glass holders that's gonna allow it to be suspended down lower from the bottom of the shelf. And now for the incredibly boring part, I get to sand 18 of these guys. Yay! I need to glue the two wine glass holder components together. And to help me do that more quickly, because I have 18 of them to do, I set up a little gluing rig. I just take this section of the wine glass holder and I insert it into here. And I just use this little shim to keep it from tipping forward. And then when I go to glue on this section of the wine glass holder, it sets the correct space. And then I just clamp it down. The wine glass holders on either end that are gonna be on the shelves are missing one of the wings on one of the sides. So when I glue this together, I intentionally left this bottom portion a little long so that I can flush this up on the, at the table saw and also with a hand plane after it's glued together. So that's what I'm gonna do next. Now that I have all of the wine glass racks installed on the shelves, I need to start working on the wine bottle storage system on the bottom. Before I can plane these boards to thickness, I need to flatten one face. And this is where having an eight inch joiner is gonna come in really handy. The center board for the X wine bottle holders needs to be a glue up of two boards. So now that I have the boards planed to their final thickness, I'm going to edge joint one edge to get it nice and square and straight, and then I'll glue them together. I've got all the panels out of the clamps and I went ahead and scraped off most of the glue from both faces. Now it's just a couple passes through the drum sander.
I need to cut these panels to length, but uh, in order to get one straight edge on one side, I'm gonna use my miter gauge. And I can't use my miter gauge in the typical fashion with the fence closer to me because it will fall off the front of the table saw. So I flipped it around the other way and I'm gonna push the work into the fence as I go backwards. And I've also raised the blade a little bit higher than normal so that I have enough room to, to cut the board before the miter gauge falls off of the back of the table saw. I repeated the process for the opposite face and the tenons will just meet halfway in the middle. With the joinery out of the way, I need to turn my attention to mitering the sides of each center board. And I'm gonna do that at the table saw with the blade tilted to 45 degrees. I have all the wine bottle holders dry assembled and the client wants me to inlay a piece of cherry right in the center or a square of cherry in the center of each wine bottle holder for some contrast. So it'll contrast nicely with the maple of the wine bottle holder. So in order to, to remove this square of maple, I'm gonna use a stack dado set at the table saw. And then once everything is glued together, I'll go ahead and insert the piece of cherry. I didn't film this glue up, but I want to show you guys how I did it. I uh, went ahead and put glue on all the tenons and all the mortises. And then I, when I clamped it together, I have two blocks of two pine blocks on the top and two pine blocks on the bottom. And in between the pine blocks and the maple bottle holder, I have a piece of sandpaper that I folded in half. So the sandpaper is making contact or the gritty part of the sandpaper is making contact with the pine block and also with the maple of the bottle holder. So these are clamped together and then the clamps on the top and bottom are pushing the whole unit together on both sides. The ends of the wine bottle holders are gonna get a square piece of cherry. So I'm gonna get that from a length of cherry that I'm going to rip at the table saw. And I'm gonna rip it a little bit wide in both dimensions and I'm gonna fine tune the fit uh, by using my dial indicator and making minor adjustments to the rip fence. In order to tie the wine storage X's all together, I cut a groove in both the front and the back on the top and the bottom of each X, and I glued in a spline. Now, the spline will now be visible on the inside of each cubby, on the, well, these three cubbies, it'll be visible. So in order to hide the spline, I cut a wedge at 45 degrees, and I'm gonna glue this wedge in with a rub joint, 
And, but in order for it to go over top of the splines, I need to cut a notch in both the front and the back of each wedge. After two and a half months of work, my wine hutch is finally finished. This was definitely a challenging project, but at the same time, it was also a lot of fun. And those of you that stuck with me for all five parts of the build series, I also hope that you got something out of this build as well. Um, I'm gonna sorry to see this guy go. This was a commission piece, so this isn't mine. But uh, I'm gonna be sorry to see it go, but at the same time, I'm gonna be glad to finally get my shop space back. Be sure to check out my Amazon affiliate store where you'll find a lot of the tools that I use in my shop. You'll also find a brief description of the tool and what I think of it. You'll find a link to my Amazon store in the description of the video.